Hi guys, it's me Annie. Welcome back to my channel. It's a bit of a gloomy day today, so sorry if it's a little dark. You know, Seattle, it is what it is. I was trying to think, what did I want to film for this week? And to be honest, the past few weeks, anytime I've come onto YouTube, I'm hearing a lot about drama, you know, a lot of things like Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star, like people being canceled. And then that led me down the rabbit hole of really thinking a lot about what is cancel culture, what does accountability mean, and why is there such a negative reaction to cancel culture? How is some of it justified? How is it not? Let's just get straight into the video. So what is cancel culture? What is call out culture? What is this accountability culture that we're seeing becoming very much prevalent on the internet, whether it's Twitter or it's YouTube? I feel like a lot of people are getting things confused. I think the message is kind of being blurred in a way, but essentially accountability and call out culture originates from a place of calling someone out because they have offended someone or hurt someone or a group of people. They have done something that has caused a negative reaction to some person or a group of people. It's about taking time to reflect and owning up to our mistakes. If we said something or did something that hurt someone else, even if it didn't affect you directly, if it affected someone else in some sort of negative way, it's about owning up to those mistakes and being responsible for your words and actions, whether they happened 10 years ago or 10 minutes ago. I believe call out culture is about accountability and taking responsibility. It's about no longer accepting the status quo or how things used to be or are known to be. And some examples of that, boys will be boys. We're all just a little racist. Yeah, cops racially profile, Asians are submissive. It's show business for women to be treated like garbage in Hollywood. I believe morphing accountability into this sort of a, a general trope of this is cancel culture, oh, so negative, so toxic. Comes from a lot of different reasons why it's become that way, but generally I feel like it's a reactionary phenomena to a society that's not really used to being called out. Like I said, we're used to hearing certain things or letting certain things slide by, but at least in recent years, especially in 2020, we're not letting that happen. If someone is acting kind of like an asshole, if someone has said something or done something that is offensive and makes people feel some type of way that's very negative, it's going to be called out. Call out culture and asking for accountability, I believe, is about growing as a human race to kind of emphasize owning up apologizing and an important part that I feel like a lot of the times we forget here on the internet, it's about forgiving people and hoping that they will grow and become better people in the long run. What accountability and call out culture is not. It's not about enforcing mob mentality. Just because you see a Twitter hashtag or oh like 10 drama channels are making a video on this person. I think as a society, as people, we have this powerful tool called the internet where we owe it to people or to ourselves even and our intellect to take a moment to just research, look things up. What is happening with this person? Why are they being called out? And really, you know, gather our own research and data before we jump on a bandwagon of hate because who knows, maybe we jumped on too quickly and maybe like a week or month later, some evidence comes up where you realize, oh no, you canceled the wrong person. An obvious example that I can think of is last year when Tati Westbrook uploaded a pretty much a hit piece video and the entire internet canceled James Charles and 10 million people unsubscribed to him without really even giving him a chance to speak up for himself or to defend himself. At the end of the day, this isn't just a common saying for a reason, it's because it's true. When there is an altercation or misunderstanding or something negative that happens between two people or two parties, there's party A's side of the truth, party B's side of the truth, and there's the objective truth of what really happened. But at least in Dramageddon, no one really gave James Charles a chance to explain himself. So everyone canceled him. And then he came out with an amazing video full of evidence and receipts and whatever. And then all of a sudden now Tati was canceled. So it's important to do your research a little bit before jumping on the bag wagons. And something else that accountability culture and call out culture is not, is sometimes it's not about you. And I think a lot of people could find that difficult to grasp because we live in a world where I feel like we forget 
compassion, we forget empathy, where even if it's not something negative that has affected you directly, it has affected other groups of people. And as humans, we should show empathy, we should show compassion for the parties who have been negatively affected. For example, Black Lives Matter, I'm clearly not a black person, you know, I am an Asian American woman. However, doing my own research, seeing what has been happening out on the streets, seeing the police brutality, seeing what is happening in society, I feel empathy towards the these people who are not me. I think it's important to talk about allyship right here where um, there are times when you know we think, oh, that has nothing to do with me, so okay, I don't care. But at least for me, I believe in the importance of allyship and solidarity and standing up for what is right, at least in my moral judgment book. I support Black Lives Matter, so I support, you know, obviously Me Too movement because I'm a woman. I might not be a woman in Hollywood, but I'm not gonna be like, oh, that has nothing to do with me, whatever. No, I support the movement because overall there were people who have been very, very hurt and negatively affected and that's not okay. It's right to show solidarity and support and empower. And another part of that argument is when someone offends a group of people, and that's not me, it's not up to me to accept that apology. For example, Shane Dawson has offended a lot of black people in the African-American community because he did comedy 10 years ago that was, I guess, acceptable. It was a status quo, right? But whether it was 10 years ago or a year ago, these negative stereotypes and jokes have not been funny to the black community. But now that he's being called out and he's apologizing, there's a lot of, you know, frankly, non-black people saying, You know what, Shane? We accept your apology. We forgive you. And let me be honest, it's not up to us to accept his apology. It's up to the people that he has directly affected, which is the black community. So a lot of the times, call out culture accountability when these things happen on the internet, it might not be about you. But it's about showing that empathy and compassion for the people who have been directly affected. Another thing that call out culture and accountability is not, is it's not running someone off their platform, whatever it may be, because you simply just don't like them. I see that a lot too, you know? Like, there's billions of people on this earth with different looks, different personalities, different views and morals, and you know, I believe it's impossible to get along with everyone you meet or see on the internet. Just you, you watching right now, I'm sure you have one or two or five or ten creators here on YouTube that you don't really like. That's why we subscribe to certain people, that's why we don't subscribe to other people. However, just because you see someone you don't really like being cancelled, it's not an opportunity for you to just to jump on that bandwagon, like I said before, and just to join the hate. Just because you don't like their personality, you don't like their content, you don't like the way they look. And an example of this that I can think about is there's this creator called Tila Dunn. She's like a lifestyle, beauty, guru, guru YouTuber, and I see her a lot in like other people's videos. I've been seeing a lot of videos over the years of people just hating on her, and you know, I did my research. Why are people so upset about Tila Dunn? And to be honest, I couldn't find anything, but they make fun of her appearance, they make fun of her personality. You know, I know some black people were saying she's not really pro-black, she seems to be ashamed to be black. That's not really my place to jump in to say anything about that because I'm not a black person, so that hopefully she figures out with her black community and with herself. But like, people are just so like rude to her and mean to her and they just want to cancel her it seems like it seems like they're just waiting for her to mess up so she can be canceled and that's not what accountability and call out culture is about you don't like someone stop following them you don't like someone just stop thinking about them what a waste of space in your mind and your heart to be constantly checking up on someone you don't like just so you can jump on them and just send them death threats and to send negativity it's a waste of time and space. There are much better things in life that we can focus on. It's not funny to cancel people. I was so upset when, was it Dramageddon? I don't know these names, Carmageddon, whatever. When Laura Lee was canceled and then she made that apology video where she was crying. And yeah, her crying was a little weird, but I, people like took clips out of her apology and they were memeing it and putting it into like comedic videos for comedic relief. I didn't find that funny at all. Oh, they did the same thing with James Charles' apo Charles's apology when he was crying. They would like put clips of it in their video and it's not funny to see someone upset. Yes, memes are a way, like comedy and making memes may be a way for our society right now to cope and deal with things and stress and I get it, it's important. But I really don't agree with memeing and making fun of someone 
when they're clearly upset, when something negative on such a wide scale is happening to them. Call out culture and accountability is not about spewing more hate and acting in a more bigoted and ignorant way. That's what we're calling out, right? We're trying to get rid of that. When you are being canceled or when you are canceling someone else, there's a lot of emotions involved. That's what I've observed over the past few years and especially the past few months. You're angry, you're frustrated, you're confused. They're on both sides, on all sides. There's a lot of high emotions. Because there are such high emotions, humans, we could act very impulsively. That could be in the form of sending death threats through DMs, commenting really negative, hurtful things like kill yourself. Or if you're the one being called out, you could just want to jump on a live and start saying, I can't deal with these haters, or you could subtweet. If you shift the focus from accountability to just hate and bigotry, the message, the entire message becomes blurred. Another thing that could happen when emotions are high is a lot of gaslighting, a lot of being defensive, not owning up to what you've done, blaming Oh my god, this is cancel culture, like everyone's always out to get me, I'm always the victim. And unfortunately, someone that I keep thinking of about this is Gabby Hanna. I don't know this person, you don't know this person. These are people who give you a glimpse into their lives. They film just like how I'm doing now, they edit just like how I'm doing now. We don't know the ins and outs of these people's lives. But when you are just harping down on them, when they've become a meme and a favorite target of choice when it comes to canceling on the internet, you don't give these people a chance to process and learn and grow when you're telling them to kill themselves. Like, where's the room to think? You know, the first instinct is to protect yourself. I think everyone on all sides, we need to take a deep breath, really. We need to take care of ourselves, whether you're doing the calling out, you're the one being called out, and if you need to apologize, apologize properly. Don't gaslight, don't deflect, don't promote your makeup brand and turn it into an infomercial. An apology is an apology. Think before you type, whether you're an influencer or you're just a viewer, your words have power. How, I don't know how many times in my life where someone's words have saved my life. Really, like those words are things I really needed to hear and I felt like I was having such a shitty week, month, year, whatever, and certain words really just lifted me out of there. So words are so powerful. And if you use it the wrong way, words are so powerful where it could lead someone to do something that they can never undo. Just because we're behind the screens, just because we're typing away and no one might know our true identity, it doesn't mean that our words are suddenly powerless. Your words, the comments you make, the tweets that you make, the DMs that you send, they matter. I think another thing that has been really skewed is calling someone out isn't automatically hate. We have free speech in this country, which is a great thing that we need to protect. You have the free speech to post whatever you want to post and be a public figure, and everyone else has a free speech to call you out if something you did or said is not acceptable. A lot of the times when people are being called out publicly, I feel like I've seen a lot of concerned subscribers and supporters that want their role models, that want their creators to just be better, to do better, to learn from this and grow. So it's not always just people who are out to get you. A lot of the times it's people who are concerned for you. So for, for example, partying during a pandemic, it's concerning because you could get sick, but not only that, you can make other people get sick. And not only that, as someone with millions of followers and subscribers, you have the amazing power to potentially influence millions of people to do the right thing, to wear masks, to protect themselves and others, to be responsible citizens in society. So those can be reasons why you might be being called out. But like I said, that message can get muddied if the first First DM these people see is kill yourself. I would close DMs and not look at social media. Last point I want to make, real talk. There are racists, homophobes, sexists out there in the world, and I'm not saying this as a hater. It's reality. Generally, I think it's accepted, at least in 2020, that women should be treated equally as men, right? I think we're on the same page here. Generally, I think societally we are accepting that the LGBTQ plus community has not been treated equally or fairly, that black trans people are being murdered and that's not okay, um, that, let's see, what else is there, that racism is not okay, 
um, I think these are general things that we can agree on, right? However, there are people in our society that don't think that way. And I think with the current political climate, a lot of those people are being emboldened to speak up. And like I said, we live in a country where everyone has their right to free speech. And, you know, a lot of the times I think people like to say, well, agree to disagree and move on. If you don't like coffee, and I like coffee, we can agree to disagree and move on. But if you think it's okay to be a racist, and I clearly don't think it's okay to be a racist, it's not an agree to disagree situation. It's a, your innate morals and values are completely different from mine. We can't be friends. I wish you the best. If this person is open to open discussion, sure, I would love to talk to them, try to educate them on why it is wrong to be racist, especially in 2020. But um, this is the real talk that we need to talk about. Um, a lot of people are just not societally good people. And just with the number of people who are on social media, on the internet, who are public figures, not all public figures are good people. And obviously the person that I'm thinking about while talking about this is Jeffree Star. And like I said, we only know a little bit, a little glimpse into the lives of these public figures. And we can only make our judgments based on what they release out for us to see. And from what I've seen, at least in the example of Jeffree Star, he has made a lot of comments and actions that I don't agree with, that I feel like, in my opinion, from my own research, shows that he does not care about the racist remarks he's made, about the negative impact that he has had on other people, especially the black community. His most recent apology was all about gaslighting, it was, it was all manipulation, it was about promoting his makeup brand, and that apology was not for the people that he offended. It was for his stance. It was for his people who will essentially line his pockets with money and who will continue supporting him no matter what he does or says. So I bring up Jeffree Star because I inherently don't think he's a good person. I don't think his morals and values align with my own, so I don't feel comfortable supporting him. So unfollow, unsubscribe, we'll be never buying his products. Am I gonna send death threats? No. <laughs> If there comes an opportunity, would I love to sit down with them and have a conversation on like, where is your head? How are you feeling right now? Like what's going on? Yeah. But once again, we live in a society where numbers count. I'm a nobody when it comes to the public sphere and he's out there living his life, making his money. And I think he has made it pretty clear what his priorities are. And it's not accountability. It's not taking responsibility for his words and actions. So. Yeah, that's it for my super long video on accountability, call out culture, cancel culture. I really hope I was able to eloquently word all the things that were spinning around in my head last night or this morning at 4 a.m. This is not a hate video. This is more of an analysis and like my commentary on this phenomena of oh my god cancel culture and how the hatred and the bigotry of certain people has effectively, I feel like, muddied the core powerful message of the importance of calling for accountability and calling for people owning up and taking responsibility, especially in the public sphere. And, you know, moving on from now, like, what are we gonna do about it, right? So, because in my opinion, I feel like because of cancel culture, this cancel culture concept, I feel like call out culture has kind of been hindered in a way. However, I'm not gonna stop calling people out or I'm not going to stop asking for accountability from public figures. I'm going to keep saying what I have to say and I think it's important to follow um, influencers and content creators who are open to listening, learning, growing, um, owning up, apologizing, and I think it's also important to continue practicing the act of forgiving and educating. And why do I care? Because I hate people? Because I'm bored? No, because I feel like as a society, as human beings, we can all do better. I'm not sitting here saying I'm this perfect person who has never made mistakes. No, I've made plenty of mistakes in my life. And if I was canceled for like every mistake that I've made, I like I should just not be here. So 
Thank you so, so much for watching this video. What are your thoughts on these topics? I think it's very important things to talk about, especially here on the public sphere of YouTube. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day. I'm sending you all positive vibes. I hope you're well, healthy, emotionally, mentally, physically taking care of yourselves during this pandemic, being safe, not forgetting to wear masks. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.